I'm making this announcement in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, Laws of the State of New Jersey. The Borough Clerk is prepared to schedule the meetings of the governing body of the Borough of Kenilworth for the year 2024. The Borough Clerk has posted a true copy of the schedule on the bulletin board located at the front entrance of Borough Hall. It has mailed two copies of this schedule to the local source, to store ledger, and the Home News Tribune. And is maintaining a copy of this schedule in her office during the year 2024. Accordingly, the notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied in regard to this meeting. Please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there a motion to accept? Oh, I'm sorry, roll call. Uh, Mayor um, Carlovich. Present. Councilman Boyle. Here. Councilman Finistrella. Here. Councilwoman Giordano Paserno. Here. Councilman Morrill. Here. Councilman Scarice. Here. Councilman Zimmerman. Here. Is there a motion to accept and approve the following minutes of the work session of December 6, 2023, February 7, 2024, and the council meeting for October 1, 2023, February 28, 2024, March 6, 2024, and March 20, 2024? Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilman Boyle. Yes. Councilman Finistrella. Yes. Councilwoman Giordana Paserno. Yes. Councilman Mora. Yes. Councilman Scarice. Yes. Councilman Zimmerman. Yes. Okay, tonight is a really special evening because we're going to celebrate the 100th birthday of our resident, Mary Joan Bar Barnett or Caverick. And I'm going to read a proclamation for her, and she's here with her family today. And we're so happy that you're here and so happy to share this amazing milestone with you and your family. Mary Joan Barrett was born on the 27th day of April in 1924 to Joan and Helen Barrett and was raised in Bayonne, New Jersey with her two siblings, Jack and Muriel. And Mary Joan Barnett married Frank Haverick on July 31st, 1943, and had four children, Joanne, Barry, Susan, and Robert. In 1953, Mr. and Mrs. Caverick moved to Kenilworth, residing at 736 Summit Avenue. And Ms. Caverick, being a forward thinker, purchased her second home at 117 West Denver Ave in Wildwood Crest in New Jersey in 1971, following the death of her husband. Mrs. Caverick worked as a waitress at the Kenilworth Holiday Inn and the King's Court in Springfield and as a probation investigator for the County of Union in Elizabeth, New Jersey for 24 years before retiring in 1999. Mrs. Caverick is the proud grandmother of eight grandchildren and 10 great-grandchildren. Mrs. Caverick has been a proud resident of Kenilworth for the last 71 years. Serving as a member of the Kenilworth Little League alongside her husband, who was the president during the 1960s, as well as a member of the Kenilworth Senior Citizen Center and the devoted parishioner of St. Teresa's Parish. Mrs. Caverick traveled to Ireland, England, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, numerous countries in Europe, and all across the United States, highlighted by a week-long raft, rafting trip in the Grand Canyon. That must have been amazing. Cherishing those trips with her family and friends. Mrs. Caverick is an avid reader, reading numerous books a week by her famous, famous favorite authors, James Patterson and John Grisham. Mrs. Caverick loves music, with big bands and especially anything by her favorite Frank Sinatra. The many events in her lifetime include the Roaring Twenties, the Great Depression, World War II, the Vietnam War, the Korean War, the War on Te Terrorism, and Mrs. Caverick is a proud patriot of the United States and always has her flag flying high in front of her home. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the borough of Kenilworth wish to honor Mary Joan Caverick on her 100th birthday, and do hereby declare the date of April 27, 2024, as Mary Joan Caverick Day throughout the borough of Kenilworth. 
In witness hereof, I, Mayor Linda Karlovich, have hereunto signed my name officially and caused the seal of the borough of Kenilworth to be affixed on the 17th day of April, 2024. Happy birthday. Kenilworth Planning Board Chairman um, for a presentation, um, Mr. Paserno, before we do reports, is going to update us on what the Planning Board is doing. Onyx, okay. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Oh, you know, you could split that around. I did two weddings, and I just didn't want the back of that to be in their pictures. So I turned it around. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations and happy birthday. We did get a new stand. Better work. Good. You know, I just felt like when they're they're doing the wedding pictures, it looks yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I can get started, right? So, um, oh, yeah. Wait, well, Rich, just give him one second. Cause one more time? Yeah, yeah, just give him a few minutes. So, uh, uh, Mayor Karlovich, Council President, Zimmerman, Governing Body, Madam Clerk, uh, thank you for giving me uh, a few minutes of time to bring you up to speed on some of the things that are going on. I thought it was important to hear exactly uh, what's going on at the planning board level. And every once in a while, I, I know we have our council uh, liaison um, that delivers the messages, but there's some inner working things that maybe uh, uh, you, you need to know. And uh, it's important that uh, we all understand what's going on. First, the planning board, myself, the chairman, vice chair, and the entire planning board want to um, actually say thank you to um, Council President uh, Zimmerman and Mayor Karlovich for doing an outstanding job on picking DMR as the planner for um, uh, the redevelopment associations, uh, not association, the redevelopment project. Um, at first blush, we took a look at everything and we were um, instructed to do a uh, a resolution was set out to, for us to do a study and what have you. We jumped at the chance to do that. It was probably the protocol to do it. Um, once we got involved in it, we, we took a good hard look at what was going on. Um, and on March 14th, uh, we had a resolution to appoint our staff, our planning board members, um, to that redevelopment study. While in the interim of talking to DMR, um, Fran and Brian, Fran the planner, Brian the attorney, <clears throat> we recognized that a lot of work was already done. 
there was a fee set aside for our planner, our attorney, our engineer, um, to the tune of about $20,000. And we thought that that was a, quite a reasonable sum of money based on the amount of work that they had to do. However, looking into it further, we had a time to look at the work that they already prepared. We passed the resolution, everything was fine, uh, there was no problems. Then we had a meeting. Once we had that meeting, we found that it's better to work alongside someone than against someone, just like we're doing tonight and that we do at the planning board level. So uh, what we determined that there's no reason to do things twice and three times and four times. So I had a conversation with our planner and uh, our vice chair, and at our meeting, we discussed that we could get better results by turning the ball over to DMR, working alongside DMR, not in front of DMR, but making sure we have a seat at the table so we can keep the borough in lockstep with everything that's going on. So I wanted to bring that to your attention because what that does is um, Kevin O'Brien, who is our planner, uh, was gracious enough to have probably a four-hour conversation with me. And when we were doing this, we were going back and forth, what if, what if, what if? And I, he then said, look, we could run with this, but it would take a little bit longer time than need be. The only people that would suffer here are the taxpayers because we need to get our ducks in a row. So at a minimal cost of that $20,000, he's waiving almost, I would say, close to 80% of it, but has some work that he has done and will continue to do. Don't please, if it's on the record that I said 80%, I don't know what the round number is, but it's, it's a heck of a lot less than 20000 So what I wanted to bring to you tonight is that the planning board is working uh, lockstep with DMR. We're going to make sure that everybody on our board is going to be um, wide-eyed and open-eared to everything that, that that DMR is doing. And when we did our homework, DMR is a class act. Um, you did a great job in in, in vetting that in vetting that uh, uh, company. So I wanted to uh, also tell you that. I know on more than one occasions I may have said, or I have said, not may have said, that we have a lot of experience in the planning board, whether it be just as planning board members or our backgrounds. And uh, today a very good friend of mine uh, said to me, you know, you said more than one occasion you have 100, over 100 years of experience on your board. And I thought about that, and we do. And I would like the governing body to be able to tap into that any time you like. Because from contractors to architects to risk management um, to engineers, they all sit on the planning board that, that, that you picked and that you allow to help uh, get the borough in, in shape or do the right thing here for the borough. Um, so I talked to the vice chair, Greg David, and I told him that I was doing this tonight. I asked him if he could be present, but he couldn't. However, um, I just wanted you guys to understand that we see the need for getting this done immediately. So what we also did on the 14th, we created a special meeting for the 29th of this month. So we will meet again on the 29th to put all our ducks in a row. Uh, to create another resolution of everything that I just said, which will be ready for you for your council meeting on the 1st. Mm -hmm. So we try to, any time we may have lost, we fast track it, not sitting on our hands. So I just wanted to present that to you. If you have any questions, I'll, I'll certainly take them. But if not, thank you for the time. Well, I want to thank you for all your hard work and streamlining this and moving it along quickly. Um, Everyone knows we have these tax appeals over our head, um, and I'm grateful to, to you and to the whole planning board, and especially Kevin, 
for um, working with everyone working together and for the best of the barrow. Thank you. There. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for your time that night when we had that meeting with everybody and you know we were trying to work our way through this and for everybody to be yeah. able to, yeah. at the end of the day, move forward for the town and, and get along and, and you know, I, I kudos to the, to the planning board and to you to to do that too, which it, it's a big help and, and, it, and it's, it's you're right, it's for the best of the town by, for sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just so the public knows, the Woo! development you're talking about summer. <laughs> The yeah. Onyx, the Onyx property. Yeah, yeah. The no, I, I'm sorry. I, meant, I, I should have said that, yeah. but I thought we. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The meeting on the 29th, I'm sorry, Rich, real yeah. quick. Is it 7 or what time? 6. Well, 6.30. Six you know what? I'll get back to you because sometimes when we have a special, we don't have a workshop. So it may be at 7. I'm pretty sure. From Kathy, I'll, I'll check while yeah. we're doing I'm pretty sure it's at 7, John. Okay. But it's going to be quite quick. You know, we don't have other, any other business when we do a special meet. Just attack that. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, finance report, Councilman Finistrella. Thank you, Mayor. Um, basically, I'll say my report for uh, when we discuss the budget. Okay. Uh, Department of Public Works, Councilman Boyle. Um, it's been a crazy couple of days, so I don't have too much. I'm just going to run through real quick. Uh, the DPW collected and disposed 220 tons of solid waste for the cost of $16,994. Collected and transported 71 yards of mixed vegetation for a cost of $1,597. Uh, collected and transported 26.5 tons of loose recyclables uh, for a cost of $2,853. Uh, we received a revenue check for $956 for 24 tons of cardboard and paper and a check for $340 for 4.4 tons of scrap metal. I believe that was just February, right? Yeah. February. That's it. Okay, thank you, Councilman. Uh, Department of Public Safety, Councilman Zimmerman. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to circle back, if I can, uh, to Pat real quick with the, uh, with the Department of Public Works. Just... Um, Two things. I know um, there's a lot of, I, I've gotten a lot of calls and, and feedback on us downsizing to the one bulk pickup. And I know you were working, and, and we, as, as our DPW committee, and so was uh, uh, Councilwoman Giordano with Greg about a, a possible alternative with drop off. And, and, and so there is something that yeah. we're trying to do to remediate not having two bulk pickups, and I don't know if you just want to expand on that well, a little bit so that people are aware of it. I think, I think, I think, I think it's premature Ken. right now. We have to have a meeting. We're going to let yeah. Ken talk to Greg yeah. first, and then we'll, we'll yeah. come back right. to it from there. Right. But it's not like it, we're just going to have one. We're looking for a we're possible for alternative, yeah. so, so that people are aware of that, only because right now I know a lot of people are up in arms about it, and I like to just quell it. We're working on it. Well, the reason we have to delay and discuss is because the budget's already been right. in place. I think there's a lot of things that we have to talk about and work out before right. we can get, make a get statement of what we're working on. It. Right, right. Correct. It didn't go by the wayside, and we're still working on it. Okay. And people just, I'm going to remind people that they do have that option to mm -hmm. come in at any time of the year. And there is a fee, but it costs the borough to get, dispose of these items. So right. it's not a, you know, money right. maker for the borough. We pass fees on because it does cost the borough. But we do have that. They can um, have items picked up from their curb every Friday. And, um, or they can drop it off. They just come to the clerk's office and pay the fee. So that's any time of the year, mm -hmm. just to remind you, right, which right. is a nice service. Yep, Not everyone offers that. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Right. Just so people know there's alternatives out there, right. and it's not totally just one, which we're going to do in the fall after the garage sale, correct? Correct. Okay. So moving on to uh, public safety, um, I have a report from Chief Seuss. Thank you, Chief. For the month of March, Kenworth Police Department answered 969 calls for service and 109 911 calls. There were a total of 210 hours of overtime, which was for patrol overtime, which was 90 hours, and dispatch overtime, which was 120 hours. The County Police Department conducted 282 hours of training, which included firearms training, uh, USERT, which is Union County Emergency Response Team training, <coughs> juvenile justice training, 
Women in Policing Conference, and Supervision Training for our newly promoted officers. There were two sick days for the month of March and no sick occurrences and no on-the-job injuries for March. March was another busy month as the Calmer Police Department responded to several, several shoplifting calls at the Acme. We had a half dozen attempted burglaries of, at various different areas of town, half a dozen thefts of, or attempted thefts from motor vehicles, and 15 arrests for offenses ranging from possession of a weapon to domestics, warrants, and assaults. Kenworth also responded to approximately half a dozen flock alerts, which led to two arrests for receiving stolen property. And the flocks are the cameras at Boulevard of Michigan that any time that something's entered and the car passes through, it scans the license plate and sends a message directly back to our dispatch center. Calvary Police Department is starting to accept applications for the Youth Police Academy, which is scheduled for this summer to be held from June 24th to June 28th. Any Cranworth resident or Burley student in grade seven through 11th grade is eligible to participate. Information is on various Kenworth Police Department social media sites, or you can contact the Kenworth Police Department SRO, Brett Byron, for more details. And I just want to congratulate Brett Byron for being our new school resource officer. I know when we promoted Brian Pickton to sergeant at the uh, last set of promotions, uh, was that last meeting, two meetings ago, um, she, she has taken the place of Officer Pickton in the high school, and I heard she's doing a great yep, job. Is. So kudos to Officer Brett Byron. Lastly, the Calworth Interfaith Council will be holding our annual day of prayer on Thursday, May 2nd at 7 p.m. in the council chambers. No, it's on Zoom. It's on Zoom? Okay. So it's going to be on Zoom. Disregard the council chambers. <laughs> we can post. That's the other one. This, this one's on Zoom. You got them confused. I, unless I have them confused, but I think I, it's on. This one will be, is going to be on Zoom. But I'll make sure that I get the Zoom link to everyone on council, and also to Angela, so she can post it on our website. Yeah. So did. <laughs> no worries. So we straightened it out. Thanksgiving so, yeah. one, the Thanksgiving service is here. I don't have to worry about the Thanksgiving. Well, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be on Zoom unless you hear otherwise, but there'll be a link on the borough website to uh, expand on that once uh, our borough clerk uh, tackles I'll get that. the information to everybody. Thank you. And uh, various local houses of worship, along with businesses, civic, and community leaders, will be joining to celebrate the theme this year of community, commitment, and collaboration. Any and all Kenworth residents are invited to attend and participate. Also, we have on uh, the agenda tonight our new uh, table of organization for the police department. It's actually an existing table of organization that kind of has been up and down, but this reflects probably for the past few years the way the police department is being run. So that's why we're going to have it on tonight, and that's the ranks that we currently have. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman. Hey, planning, zoning, Councilman Morrow. All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, in relation to what the Chairman of the Planning Board was saying before, that special meeting is 7 p.m. Rich, I guess if it changes, we'll have it posted. Uh, but this video will show 7. But that's so far April 29, 7 p.m. right here. All right, so a uh, light report tonight for uh, zoning and enforcement. Uh, we look back at the last month, and it was actually pretty slow. We had 11 zoning applications. They were filed for various outdoor accessories, as you can expect in the spring, uh, a few sales of some properties, and some fences. April already has 11, so we're seeing an increased amount of activity. Again, what you should expect. I'll report on what all that was about in the next meeting. Regarding complaints, we've had many, many over the last, I'd say, six weeks or so about flooding issues going on in town. We've invited our town engineer tonight to come chat with us a little bit about some of the things going on. Uh, you know, from a, a non-engineer's perspective, I can tell you we have a few things going on on a regional basis that will be a lot harder to crack as if they're nuts. Uh, and then you have things that are done more on a focused lo local basis where code enforcement can help out. And, and we'll talk about some of those things uh, based on what we're hearing from the public tonight, as well as some existing projects we already know going on. So Tony, thanks for coming. Um, we'll have a lot to talk about in a few minutes here. 
Um, on code enforcement itself, we saw four, four complaints logged for the month of May, excuse me, March. Uh, we had some property maintenance issues and one uh, dead tree causing a hazardous condition to a neighboring property all have been addressed. On zoning, we had three complaints, uh, all related to the same single family dwelling that was being used as an illegal multifamily dwelling, uh, also has been addressed. Uh, that's what I have for uh, zoning and planning, but I would like in this moment to thank Jill Good for her service to the borough as our CFO. I served, it was my second year now on the Finance Committee, and you have been a rock, a trusted partner, somebody I think we've all relied on. Uh, we're going to miss you. You're leaving us in great hands with Ken, but I wish you well in your retirement and conquer that next chapter. Thank you. That's it, Mayor. I, uh, I agree. Yeah. Thank you, Jill. 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 Great job. Okay, Recreation and Fire, uh, Councilman Scarice. Thank you, Mayor. Um, nothing to report from the Fire Department. Uh, for Recreation, we have a uh, town-wide Easter egg hunt. was a huge success, probably the best turnout ever. Had about 380 kids that participated. Uh, middle school baseball season is uh, going well. So far, the record is one and two. The next game will be this Friday, the 19th, away at Scotch Plains. Uh, middle school track and field is also going smoothly. The next meet is also this Friday, 19th, away at Union Catholic. Um, following is a list of student athletes that did well at the uh, April 11th meet. Uh, we have Bobby Caldwell, first place boys, 1600 meter, with a time of 5 minutes 38 seconds. Um, Olivia Levy, first place girls, shot put with a distance 25 feet 3 inches. Alicia Lacavo, first place girls, 1,600 meters, time six minutes, 52 seconds. Morgan um, Cloth, second place girls, 1,600 meters, seven minutes, 31 seconds. Uh, Romeo Correto, second place boys, 100 meter, 12.7 seconds. Uh, Mathis, and Maguana, fourth place boys, long jump, 15 feet, one inch. Alicia Locavo, fourth place girls, long jump, 12 foot, 10.5 inches. Summer camp registrations are now open to the general public, registered through Community Pass. Currently there's a 148 kids from uh, 101 families in town that have already signed up. There are only 32 spots remaining. Um, there was some discussion about the fireworks and if they can go over the field or not. The school did not. Um, say that we could not launch there. They were just uh, inquiring. Uh, so, Mike, I don't know if they ever reached out to you. Um, Vincent, you know, um, their VA. You can let them know um, if you have any reservations because it's on, you know, because of the construction going on. Uh, as long as they're uh, in the fireworks company, once we decide, that, as long as they're, they're okay with it, they, they can uh, continue to uh, have fireworks in their location. So, we have, um, I looked into the state codes, we need 70 feet from structure for every one inch of shell. So I believe we're using three inch shells. So I don't think the building is going to impact that. It would be the same distance from the building. Okay. Where we are, where we set up. So it's just really up to the school with the turf. I think that was their biggest favorite concern was us with a stray uh, shell that you know, going on the turf and damaging the turf. I don't think it really had anything to do with the construction. That, that's what they raised to me. They didn't yeah. say, and, I, and I, you're right, and the wording that came to me was not you can't, but please look at other options because they're concerned yeah. with putting in the new turf. Mm -hmm. um, and just like you said, Mike, that, that debris burn. would get right. on yep. their new turf. Well, um, I did reach out to the county. I just haven't got heard back yet about using Blackwood Park. So. Yeah, that could possibly be an option. Yeah, change your tune. They said it's, it's um, school will be fine um, as long as the fire department was good with it. Um, and it doesn't change the rest of the business as long as the distance and the structure is the same. Yeah, I mean, we should probably, I don't think it's going to They had to be moved a little bit. Um, Roosevelt Park, though, has a turf field and they have uh, been, been off turf. Uh, turf. No, they have, they have, they have grass. They have grass? Yeah. But maybe they mixed up the town. There was a town at uh, Springfield. Maybe Springfield then? Anyway, there was a, it's a local town. Um, we were going to investigate if they took any precautions. Uh, but they've been shooting fireworks over turf field, no problems. Um, 
also as a last ditch effort, we could have, if they have, uh, we could bring, you go to Harbor Freight, get parts. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was thinking. If that's a make or break thing, I think that would be safer than Blackbrook. Uh, even logistically, the rec department would not be able to do half of what they could do because of space limitations. There's a lot more things that, that could potentially catch fire, I would agree, right? And, no, no, I mean, like I said, it's Black Rock. Rock. they do their fireworks. Yeah, I don't know who he's You need 25 feet from any overhead obstructions. So Cranford is pretty much 25 feet outside of the tree line okay. uh, at, their, at their fireworks, and that's County Park. I did some measurement on a uh, mapping software. So if we went in the corner of the lake, mm -hmm. you pretty much have right field of the baseball field itself, not the softball field. You have probably the whole infield as well as another 30 or 40, 50 feet maybe into the outfield, all the way across, and then you have the park ones. You have a lot of spectator area that you would be outside of that 210 feet. Is it that 210 feet structure were spectators? But if you do have the room to do it down there, um, but you know it's just a matter of what you guys want to do. So I just wanted to map, map everything out so you can get an uh, So there's probably more room for spectators down there. It'd be in one general area, but there, there is a lot of room. Probably talking you know, anywhere 300 foot by 200 foot section for spectators. All right, so it's a viable option. Uh, it's a viable option. Okay, that's good to know. Because we didn't know we would discuss like, why is it open cost? All right, good. So. And only he gets the county park and they allow parents to do it, so I wouldn't see why. I think that the town, doesn't the county do the fireworks in Cranford in the park? I don't know, I think the township of Cranford does those fireworks. Uh, they're county fireworks. I'm yeah, pretty I sure. Think yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and also the county does pick up the, the county police for there because if it's on county property, our police wouldn't, wouldn't be involved at that point, maybe for traffic very, very slightly, but it would be county uh, police that, that yeah. do the... The county park. Everyone thinks it's Cranford, but it's it's not. It's a county. Yeah, Matano Park is also a county park, and, and that's not Elizabeth's fireworks. That's the county's fireworks too. Yeah, is it something we want to entertain? And I, I mean, as the governing body, then we want to entertain these options. We want well, I mean, I'd rather have the school first. Well, could I, I just want to weigh in because that came up at the school board meeting last Monday night. Um, they have a real concern because. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money being mm -hmm. invested, and it's a brand new field. And should something happen, it could impede on their warranty for the new field. So it, even though you know, you never know, but the trash being on it, people walking on it, and the fireworks and whatever. The debris that comes down. The debris that comes debris down. Like, people don't walk on it. And it's brand well, whoever is cleaning it up, and you don't know how they're picking it up, I'm just saying. And that's one of their concerns is that could that infringe on the warranty that's mm -hmm. going to be brand new there? Because um, I'm, I'm sure they have, you know, a pretty lengthy warranty for, mm -hmm. for that new um, field. And maybe the, so. the, the TARP is something we could ask about as well. Um, it's a lot of TARP. It's a lot of TARP. That's, that's a huge TARP. Right. Yeah. And Chief, Chief Scuderi, like, I know you guys go up on the roof, you check it with the, with the uh, tower truck. I know some debris has come down that's been lit before. How, how, what, you know, what's, how much stuff that over the, the, since we've been doing fireworks, has there been debris that's been on fire that could burn through a tarp and on this this field? I don't know that you have an issue with the fireworks that go up and come down, the, the shells, spent shells. I don't really know if that would damage the field. But you always take the risk. Roosevelt Park did have a couple of years ago, one of the tubes tipped over and it shot fireworks sideways and it hurt, did injure some spectators. Well, if that leaned over and you had a live firework that shot towards the field, that would definitely damage the field. Yeah, and the field is actually a, a no-fly zone. There's no people on the field because it's of the proximity. But you're right; it could could technically right. go that way. But imagine the fire companies in short, but the warranty would be a different. Right, issue. right. I mean, they definitely land all the football. Field. They yeah. Right. Land. Yeah. Yeah. No. And in the parking lot, like the yeah. cars are covered with ash and, and debris. Right. I mean, there's options we could wet the field down prior. I don't know if that would help or not. The other thing you want to keep in mind is that. 
these turf fields require a special piece of equipment to clean it. You can't just use a leaf blower. And then even after you clean it, you have to now have someone inspect it for density because of all of our pellets. And because the sweeping machine will move the pellets around. Right, right. So they have to check for density levels to make sure no one gets hurt when they fall on it. So those are added expenses you have to factor in. Sounds like we have some issues having this at the school. Yeah, I mean, I think we have to really start. We can have to, I, 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 I'm still waiting for the county. I did county. I did already. If they would sponsor it there. I'm waiting to hear back from them. That's a nice option. So. Well, so the county will sponsor it at Blackbrook. It's, it's a county park. It's a county park and. Yeah, you're talking. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we would need Porter Johns. There's a lot that's going to go into. They have a lot more too. They right. give us the stages and stuff. And I, I have a call on to them, so hopefully, um, I will be able to work something out. That's the best I can say right now. Um, I'll do my best to uh, see if they'll will help us out. Um, is there anywhere else that we could have them that anyone's aware of? I, I, it has light, but I was thinking, you know, when you go down towards where Roberto's was and you make that left going back to behind Merck? Yeah. Like those buildings have huge empty parking lots. Uh, They're all privately owned. Yeah, it's private. They're privately owned. They're not you need 210 owned. feet from the yeah. structure uh, or from spectators. So you really don't you figure out your street is 30 feet wide. Yeah, so you're not really. So like Flexi Van wouldn't be an option? No, there's, no there's, there's wires there, and, and that, yeah, that could be a... There's three buses, too. Privately owned properties. People yeah. are not going to... Yeah, yeah there'll be a liability home. issue for whoever Sheet owns that, right? Got yeah. people coming. Yeah. They're not going to... And they store school, school buses there, too. Mario, you're... Uh, yeah, we've got the There's nowhere you're going to be that you're going to be 200 feet. Right. Yeah, it's too tight. So there's no other option. Yeah, unfortunately... I thought about that too. I did think that was crossed my mind, but then I'm hearing all this buzz about private property. But hey, listen, you know what? It's always worth having a conversation. I mean, you know, I think that I could reach out to them and just sort of ask them if they would even they consider like entertaining something like that. Um, That's a huge piece of property up front. So. Your, your parking lots are big enough that you can be. We could do it. And then. Because that right. one is not really graded. I don't know if you're really going to walk around in that grassy area. Right. Would there be parking? People would have to, I mean, everyone that comes to the fireworks would then be parking, right? Driving there. So is there enough, is there enough for parking and fireworks? Yeah, they have, I mean. They have to be in the garage. Yeah. Or they have a lot of parking. Right, right. I mean, I think it's at least worth a conversation. I mean, you know, what's the worst case? They say no. I, you know, can't hurt to ask. I'll do it. <laughs> I right. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, but I think once they develop it, then Well, it might be different, but we're yeah. one year at a time. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, right, right. If that's the only way we can do it. Well, it looks like uh, in the future the uh, fireworks might um, we might have a challenge unless we really do partner with the county and do something in Blackwood Park because I agree that that front part of that property will be developed at some point and we will that'll take away that uh, option. Well, the golf course. Uh, oh, at least it's not turf. The problem in golf course is they have events there. So if they have an event scheduled for, you know, Sunday night, now we're going to do you know, and, and, right. and to block it off to set up to stop golf, that place, is, right. the, the golf is backed up there on weekends. And there's a yeah. parking issue there, too, to have it there. I yeah. mean, that parking lot isn't big enough to host fireworks. And Blackbrook, most people can walk. Right. Streets, I mean, block. Right. And you right. can park in a residential area for Blackbrook and walk it. And right. You, and there's the parking lot up top where you can do everything at the top. Yeah. You just need to get or, or, or the jobs and by the grilled cheese place. That too. Yeah, right. There. Right. Yep. All right. Well, I'll work on that and if report back. Walk through. I can get a measurement. Walk it off. You can see how much area you have for spectators. Okay. Oh yeah, that would all have to be blocked off. Yeah, I'll do that. For first, I'll call and just ask if they're willing to entertain the idea, and then. 
I'll call you and we'll do that and see I if it actually ago, will work. Yeah, years ago when I was young, there was fireworks there. I don't, you know, I, but that was a long time. I know ago. all that. Yeah. You're not older than me. Oh, the black was, was, oh no, was, I do remember the black truck. Yes. Thought, oh, he did it? I thought it was... Now, he, I, thought yeah, they were, I thought they were saying... Yeah, right? They used to, I remember they used to dead all like three years. They did shoot shells. No, I know they did. That's why I thought they were sanctioned. They, so they were just I think it was private. those guys. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't think it was... I think they're right. That wasn't that big a turnout, so I don't think it was sanctioned. But it was, they were good fireworks. Actually, I do remember that. Um, I had a couple questions on... Um, some of the consent agenda. Uh, 113. Oh, we took care of it. I'm sorry. Uh, 115, the lane redemption. I was just trying to understand the process. Or how uh, sure. Uh, what happens is if somebody uh, doesn't pay their taxes, it goes to a tax sale. Uh, they have uh, the new home as of the two years to uh, possibly to work close. They start paying taxes in the new home. And then the homeowner has to pay back the lien holders to get the lien lost their property. Plus interest, and when the charge sometimes gets paid, the owner that pays sometimes the property is selling, and the uh, closing company is going to pay to get the lien lost their property. So I think in this case that I'm not sure if the property is selling or the property owner is. But they have to. Uh, have an interest in the property to uh, redeem and um, a resolution gets signed. And then uh, it, it's satisfied, it gets recorded at the county, and then the lien is removed off the property. Okay. I th that, from my reading, it thought we had to pay back like 60000 um, Well, that, nothing would come from the, the town unless we were holding a, a premium, which is sitting in our trust account. But it's, it, it, it was the lien holder's money to begin. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not, not the city municipality. Okay, I'm just curious about that. Um, in 117, we're getting um, that matching grant. So it's $170,000 we've been doing uh, on a building. I didn't. What oh, no, no, no. no. Remember, that's a, it's an application. Oh. So it's not. Um, Okay. Oh, and this is, uh, we, it's an application, but this is the one that just came, actually. Mm -hmm. Right, right, it just got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's just a massive, yeah. but I was like, uh, I don't know if there was what really needed to get done. Oh, you know, well, like there, a lot of money. there's a big hole in the roof, so it's is not... It? Uh, it, it's kind of general repairs because we also didn't know exactly what we would get, so we kind of lumped several things in. The front steps, if you notice. Yeah, that I know. Uh, things All right, like so that. the building's a little more... Uh, more I, I mean, we, there's <laughs> probably lots of things we could do if we got, but we did, if you want to announce, Mayor, but we did just find out we got... Yep. Um, you can announce it. Yeah, 50,000, 50, 50, right? 50,000. Yeah, we did. We found out just after... Uh, this was, you know, it was submitted and we just found out. And did you get to my email about the video I'm making on the... Uh, is that only, is that a profit from our Okay, I have to make a short video. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Revenue and amount of yeah. 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 We'll go with the phone. 69. Now I know what it's like. Recycling time. I can. I can. I can. I can. I can. I So every... Every year we uh, we send out a report. I'm currently doing it right now. We send a report out to the DEP saying exactly how much was recycled in the town cover. That doesn't mean what DPW recycled. It means anyone. So if someone did a tear off on a roof, shingles are recycled. Concrete is recycled. Someone, whatever we gave a road, the contractor that goes out that road, he recycles that asphalt. Even though he's doing the work, we never see any bills. Like Lord John, I should say for him, he's recycling that, and that's all tonnage reports that we have to send out. And then, based on our numbers, the uh, the DEP awards grant money to every single municipality and county. And the majority of this money is funded through a three dollar tax per ton on hmm. solid waste. Okay, so, so it's like we're getting our money back. That's great. Uh, no. With the amendment, um, doing the uh, employment titles and the salaries, we just eliminate three positions. I know we 
kind of pitched it already. Didn't you? No, we did. You know what? The, so it's the change back, the title. Yeah, no, this is back. Sorry, mm -hmm. we had um, we we didn't change any of the stuff. We sorry, it's coming back because we did find that um, in the rec department. The, it didn't line up and we needed to modify the titles and create the positions that we're going to have. And for one thing, for the most part, it's been summer camp, but we recently added um, homework club. So what we decided to do is come up with um, um, the flexible um, job titles so that we can use them and we can use those same titles so if you notice it's um, program counselors mm -hmm. that program is whatever program the rec department or any other department may run it's a program counselor is their homework cup counselors summer camp counselors okay. and we created three of them based on the tiers and you know we for summer camp for example they do have those same three tiers so that's really all it is doing and it kind of brought them up to date to really in line with what we're doing it should have been included we didn't realize that it was out of date when we did the others so these were the last ones hopefully you won't see this again for a long time um, but that's all that's changed just those three. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. It's a more professional um, It sounds nice, right? right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Instead Thanks. of just playground right. leader right. or supervisor. Thanks. I can't all right. That's all the questions. And that's all I have to report, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councilman. Education, Health, and Human Services, Council Ge Councilwoman Giordano Pisarno. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I guess I'll start with the Board of Education. And as everyone knows, our superintendent, uh, Mr. Arlington, uh, put in his resignation, um, and a new job, his job has, or the position has already been posted April 11th. So applications are being accepted, um, interviews can be set up, and um, so already the board is being very proactive and assertive in finding the right person to fill that position. Uh, Mr. Arlington was with us five years. I don't know if a lot of people realize he was there that long. And um, on behalf of the borough, I'll thank him for his service. When I was there Monday night, before uh, we knew of his resignation, they were presenting a lot of staff members from both Brearley and Harding for outstanding service, teacher of the year, and the sixth grade uh, government also got up and received awards for all of their service as president and vice president and treasurer. And to hear these young sixth graders speak so eloquently and comfortably in front of a packed room, um, there had to be 50 people there. I didn't know what, what I was walking into. Um, so it was really nice and it's a testament to the teachers and um, you know, you always say it starts from the top whether it's good or bad. So uh, I think Mr. Arlington did a very outstanding job while he was with us and I hope we get someone um, to keep that ball going, especially during the construction and, and the new phases that will be going on in both Brearley and Harding. Um, for the library, we have been working very closely with the board and the director there to transition some of the financial responsibilities from the borough that are strictly related to the library um, because they are a more autonomous entity and they will be picking up some of the um, basic costs for uh, DPW work that's done there, payroll, insurance, um, retirement benefits, things like that, so that the, the, the library will pretty much handle their own expenses as well as um, their programs and such, and relieving that financial burden from the borough. So we're still working out the little bit of details, but um, it's all transitioning very easily. And thank you to Jill and to Ken. Um, but Jill's right there with all the answers um, that they needed to know what certain things meant. Um, as far as the senior center, I see that Greg's been over there stiffing it up. Um, Shirley's really cracking the whip. 
and um, getting ready for the grand reopening that will happen during the, um, the uh, street fair. And uh, next week, uh, April 22nd, is the um, health nurse comes to check for blood sugar, blood pressure, so anybody could go, it's free, correct, uh, Shirley? Um, but you, if you read their plethora of events going on there, um, it's just extraordinary. So I urge every senior to get out and go see what's going on. And if you have questions about anything, the phone number is 908-276-1716. Uh, the Board of Health has their meeting next week on the 25th. So I'll be attending that, and anything going on there, I'll uh, bring back to the meeting uh, for the next council. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Barrel Engineer. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just have one thing to report on, and then before we uh, talk a little about the drainage issues. Um, Maplewood, uh, you know, road work is well underway. Uh, all the storm waters in the soil. Um, the sump pumps that were causing some flood problems out there are now draining to the storm sewer. So all those ponding issues that were going on uh, will be taken care of. Uh, the curves are going to go next, and then they'll finish up with the paving. Uh, they probably, probably will be out there in right another week to two weeks, and they should be wrapped up. Um, next thing uh, I'll talk about, that. I know there's a lot of uh, complaints about the storm water, drainage, and flooding issues. Um, just so everybody understands how the, uh, how the evolution of our drainage system. You know, the storm sewers in Kendallwood are probably like 80 years old, or maybe even older. Um, at the time they were installed, they were designed for a particular rainfall. Um, so, you know, anytime you get a storm that, that exceeds that, that capacity, the storm sewers just, they, they don't handle it. And that's why you get these backups and sometimes streets flood. Um, you know, we've been getting over the last couple of years a lot of these high intensity storms. I think that's why you should probably see a lot more <coughs> localized flooding. Um, there's really no easy solution to like fix a particular street. <coughs> these sewers are all connected street to street, town to town. Uh, some of our sewers go through uh, Cranford, some of them go through Union. You all ultimately end up in the Broadway River. Uh, river. Uh, another piece of it is when that, uh, the level of the river rises, that backs up the system, and the water has nowhere to go. Um, the, the solution is really more on, on a regional basis. Uh, again, it's really difficult to like, fix a particular street. Um, but with that said, when, when there is an issue uh, or a particular street, if it seems to be flooding frequently, we do investigate it, we look for blockages, collapse pipes, and you can the pipe and flush it, make sure there's no blockages. Um, but um, you know, there's really, again, there's no really no easy solution. Uh, the open streams or the uh, open ditches are all regulated by DPD, and, and they're heavily regulated. We really can't go in and do much with those streams short of just cleaning them out. We can't go in, we can't increase the capacity, uh, we can't widen them. Again, we can take out the silt, we can clean any snags or, or all the trees, but uh, there's really not much we, we can do with those. Um, the, the ultimate solution, and I don't know if everybody's aware, uh, back, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe 10 years ago, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers did a study on the entire Royal, Royal River Basin, mm -hmm. and they came up with like six solutions to, to solve this uh, the flood on a regional basis. Uh, they did recommend, they, they made a recommendation. Uh, the problem is Congress and the fund. Um, really, where you can put your effort is, uh, you know, put pressure on your, your, your representatives to fund the project because that that's the ultimate solution. Um, it's very again, it's been really difficult to do this on a localized basis. Uh, it's it's gotten done on a regional basis. Mm -hmm. But if anybody does have a particular problem, just my information's on the uh, website. Just send us an email. We'll go out with DPW, we'll look at the situation, see if there's anything going on that's, that's causing the problem. Um, so okay, that's kind of, you know, the short of it. Tony, I had a resident uh, from the north side, northwest side of town, um, I'm not sure if it was Wilshire or Bass, or the, the area over there that 
where Pembroke would back up to the Doka property. That whole area is, I guess, a flood zone, but flooding more often. And I think Carver went out there and a letter was given to the resident that the harbor would present a plan to the borough uh, governing body. This was uh, back in October. I'm not sure if we've gotten around to seeing the plan, uh, if it's been developed by Harbor, but there was some indication to this resident at least that there would be something we could do. We did a, we did a walk through, we didn't prepare the report yet, but we really didn't find anything along there. We, we, we uh, walked it. We didn't find any blockages, we didn't find anything really going on there that would be causing a problem. Um, Right, uh, I think one floor of the tree that we've taken care of, but that's me. Is it okay? Yeah, I mean, we did walk it, um, we have a report, but I've been using it for 18 years, and for 10 minutes down. The last street's Dorset, right? Yes. This is what it causes. Yeah. Again, that, that's a capacity. I did have the county go out and clean the property, the county property behind Dorset Drive. Um, and they are going to do some more work back there that will hopefully um, move the water along a little bit better in that part of town. They also did some work on Dorset Drive as well. Um, the next plan, now that they've cleaned out, I, I actually sent some pictures of property that we would be responsible to Greg, and he's taking care of that, um, is to remove these those two big round uh, concrete cylinders that, that are uh, running underneath that, um, I guess it's a bridge. Like a footbridge. Like a, right, for bikes. Um, because what's happening is a lot of debris is getting stuck there. So the county feels that if they remove that, that'll also help. And, and the good part of this is that this is now on their radar and something that they're going to monitor. So they'll be checking it regularly. And if it needs to be cleaned down and there's anything that the county can do, they will take care of it and maintain it uh, now. And they did go out and I have, they send me pictures. <laughs> so I know they were there. Um, so hopefully all these little things can help. However, um, our engineer is correct that this needs to be handled on a regional level. There's really nothing Kenilworth, just us onto ourselves, can do. Um, there's been a lot of work and agree that Congress needs to fund. They've come up with many solutions, um, not just one. And uh, but this comes at a great cost, and a lot of municipalities along the way, everyone has to get on board. So I think the storms have become more severe and more intense that towns 10 years ago that might not have jumped on board are jumping on board now. Um, however, we still need funds and it's billions of dollars. Um, I, I, can't, I don't even know the exact number, but it's, it's definitely significant and it's a significant project. <coughs> it's really the federal government needs to come in and help us out. What street do you live on? Shire. Oh, Shire. I don't understand what happens that the water, once it reaches a point, it just bubbles over the storm drains and it floods my well, drive. It could be wood. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not an engineer. However, if the, if the river is already flooding, there's nowhere for the water to go. So it's the, it could be backed up three towns down the river. Um, I'm not sure why. But I am a, that right. The there's the from the right. That, that's if, if rises very fast, right. You don't need a short storm, uh, storm that rises. It's surcharging to the pipe, so it's coming up and it's coming up from the stream to the pipe, and it coming up out of the end. That, that's the problem. Uh, but we do have a um, we do have a we did a, uh, a water project. To fix that intersection. Yeah, it just seems to be delayed, and we're putting the pressure on the contractor to get out to get out there and do it. If it doesn't start it soon, we're probably going to pull it and hand the order to somebody else. Uh, but he promised he's going to get out there. He, he's trying to not pull the winter. But so that intersection has a particular problem um, that we can, we can work with to help. Um, it may not be a cure all, but um, well, years ago, that right. intersection was redone before our time, and I think that they lowered. The grades elevation, which is causing a uh, surcharge. So something was modified, probably correctly at the time, and we're going to correct that. There wasn't a problem with a landscape that was broken, grass clippings 
into the creek. That has been resolved. And I can say that the problem is not as big as it used to be. Right. Where I right. get two feet of water in my driveway. But at some point, you know, when you get enough water, it still starts to rise. And, and mm -hmm. we have to move the cars, we have to put, he built uh, two barriers in front of the garages so that the water doesn't come into the house. So it's just mm -hmm. something to live with getting up at one o'clock in the morning, having to move your cars and having to just they're underwater. So it's just a pain waiting for it to receive. Tony, can we follow up with the contractor? Uh, Tony? It's all right. Tony, can we follow up with the contractor and pull it ASAP if they're yeah, not going to be responsive? The contractor. So yeah, we've well, engaged. Yeah, okay, okay, well, on timing, okay, right? Okay, great. Um, yeah, I mean, any little thing that we can do would obviously help. And right. I think the mayor was being a little humble. She's been involved in some of these mayor councils where, where is it spreading from West Orange right. down to Right, all the way Broadway. down. Um, it is a regional problem. It's a it's mayor's a coalition region. on flood control. It's, it's coming from all over. Mm -hmm. For some odd reason, it doesn't happen in front of anybody else's house. Before. Hopefully this will do something. Time will tell. But we got to get the contractor out there. So thanks for following up. Let's it's see. It's the right intersection. Do they live close to the river? Yeah, no, it's, it's we know. We know where that is. I face the grass, sir. Yeah. My house faces the grass. Yeah, I know. I remember I was there. And then the... He showed me his... Uh, well, speaking of contractors, uh, I have a question, um, Tony. I think it's um, high time the sidewalks on the boulevard got fixed. I mean, it's been a couple years now, right, or at least a year that they dug the sidewalks up. Yeah. And they look, do they just look horrible? I mean. Brand new sidewalks. It's the center of our town, our business district. Um, I just feel that we got we have to put some pressure there. I mean, they're obviously done with the work there, so in, you know, I think they should fix them after they're done, eat block by block. Um, you know, I was up there over the weekend, uh, walked up town to have dinner, and it's that's just upsetting to see our our beautiful sidewalks in our center of our town look so bad for so long and they're clearly done working there and there's two they've pretty much ruined two blocks of brand new sidewalks yeah it's blacktop now it's it's, of it's really it's, it's, it's awful yeah. it's awful like like that, can we that one or a guess? I, I mean i would like i would like to call them myself actually well, and find out why they're they're I neglecting they that no, that's I'm not talking. That's, that's different. I'm talking about the mm -hmm. in front of. Yeah, was, um, was that one or a guest? Uh, twenty uh, second to twenty first and um, twenty first to twentieth. I would love to call them myself. Actually, fair? let them know how can, unhappy I am. Can they get them done before we have the street fair? Because it's very uneven, <coughs> and you're going to have a flood of people walking. On the sidewalks, May 19th. It's plenty of time. They have a month. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll put some pressure on them. I did. I did talk a couple of weeks ago, and they said they were going to take part. It looks like they're going to have to take quite a bit of that up to yeah. fix it as well, because yeah, I know they yeah. tried to cut them in each of those squares, but they haven't. Like they've infringed on the next square, and I'm just wondering how they're actually going to fix them to, and restore them to the way that they were. Uh, I mean, I'm not a contractor, but it, it seems like uh, it's going to be difficult to happen. Yeah, well, I, I advise them that it's going to have to be perfect. I mean, we're not going to follow. We're not going to mm -hmm. set any less than right. perfect match um, because it, they're, they're new. You know, they're, they're 20 years old, and okay, they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're way too, too new to be, uh, you know, having things that don't match. Right. Um, I know that, uh, I think Angela's going to bring it up, but one of the solutions is, um, we can uh, put the organs in place. Uh, any disturbance in the street, sidewalks, would require a complete replacement. 
Like, we don't have that equipment right now, and we kind of right, let's get that. do a lot more training. Mark, can you work on that? I have a sample from what town? I have Berkeley Heights who got it. There's from New Providence. They did it last year. Um, we'll send it to, uh, to send it to Mark. Yeah, okay. and they make them sign mm -hmm. something when they do the opening permit. Um, yeah. Did I copy you? I don't remember. Yeah, Mark. I'll send it to you. I sent it to them first if they were interested. So mm -hmm. it was on tonight. Yeah, I'll send you what they did. Okay. Yeah, a lot of times they'll do half the street and then they, they, yeah. they cut a right. seam and then you have a half street that's new and a half street that's old. I know. It's just a matter of time until this. And these sidewalks, I mean, you know, they're brand new. It's our business, our business district. It should be beautiful. So they make them sign something then when they do right. the permit. Yeah. So up front. That's going to be a total. That's going to be a total rip out and, and replace. They're going to have to. It has to be. It has to be. It's just they're a mess. To do it, I know. I mean, obviously, emergencies, we can't stop the emergency repair. I've never seen one as long as seven. Tony, you said you saw one as seven? But if they had a moratorium and they wanted to put a main and they'd have to pay the whole street, right? You wouldn't, but they don't have to pay the But again, we can have an ordinance that if they do disturb the street, it's got to be, you know, a complete uh, reconstruction. Um, if it's only like a patch, we can make them go like 10 feet on each side, mill it out, blend it in. Um, you know, we could work out, if the council would like, we could work out and put something together. Um, and that would pretty much assure that these things get prepared. Yeah. We don't have to be like trying to. With the timeline, too, so that like right. this one's been sitting now for, right. for way too long. My street was paved, and then, I mean, I don't know how many years later, but they patched it up, and there's all these square holes and that are fixed. It just doesn't look nice. Right. The, the sidewalks are the sidewalks are horrible. And they've been there that way in my opinion for way too long. Yeah. Like it's just, you know it's a center of town. Right. Like I said, I call them. I had to get the number. <laughs> Someone wants to share me the contact, I'll call them. Uh, while you're on the drainage subject, is there an update for Richfield Ave? Um, there's, this is not the public portion of the meeting, so you're going to have to wait, I'm sorry, until the public portion to speak. But you can come up and, and we'll address your concerns. Uh, Tony, real quick, the Army Corps engineer, do you have any idea what they were proposing? Just more dikes and like levees? Or no. Was a, was a I have all that information. I can send it. I can send it. There was a lot. And there's actually been another study now, um, a whole new on Orange Reservoir, and it was a long process to get Orange in, uh, to cooperate because they don't, they're part of this, but they don't have flooding issues because they're upstream. However, they have gotten on board, but again, it's coming down to Congress uh, for funds. But if you'd like information, uh, I shared some of it with Councilman Morrow. I can share it with you. Um, I could have to go back on that original six um, plans that, um, uh, and uh, Tony was talking about. Um, I have it somewhere in email. I just have to go back in my archives. But those, um, they sort of passed them up. So what happened was on those six proposals, no one could agree. Not only did Congress not fund it, but also all the towns along the river had to agree on one specific method, and they didn't. And it started fighting, and that sort of derailed that project 10 years ago. So it has since then been revisited that I have been involved um, since Sandy. And now we've come up with a new plan um, that everyone seems to be on board with that will work if we just need the funds. And I, like I said, I'll share that with you, um, what I have. So it is, so I guess the people need to know that there are, there, it is being looked at from, I, I know this mayor's coalition, all of us meet every couple of months, and with our higher elected officials in, and municipalities, I'm sorry, it's a spider, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Um, we, it is, you know, it's not that this flooding is happening and no one cares and no one's paying attention. It's just that it's a massive undertaking, billions and billions of dollars, and, um, you know, but it isn't that, I don't want anyone to think that 
we're not aware that this is going on. You know, I mean, a, a lot of portions of County Earth are flood zones. There was conversation in part of this six. Uh, one of the things was that FEMA comes in and purchases all that property down on the north end, and they take those houses down, and it's wetlands, which is really what it was, was wetlands before they were built. You know, so there's been a lot of uh, ideas on the table. You know, obviously we don't want that, and no one wants that, but. You know, um, it's it's definitely people are trying to address it, and people do care, and we do want to get this fixed. Because you know what, it's only a matter of time before Sandy and Irene come back again, and we're lugging our stuff out on the front lawn and throwing our furniture out and everything else. So um, I just think that the process is very big, and to say that. This is going to be rectified. Stop, stop don't do that. It's <laughs> um, you know, in any time, probably very soon, is probably not really realistic. Um, so a lot of elected officials that were really spearheading this uh, mayor's coalition are no longer um, elected officials. There were some people in Congress that were like, had their finger on the pulse that that are no longer congressmen so so there's things that happened that sort of stalled this project so i just recently got an email within the last week of some mayors like hey let's let's try to stir this up again so um I'm going to drag uh, Councilman Morrow in, into that flood zone with me and um, <laughs> these meetings but you know we're doing what we can to try to help you and, and our town, and ourself, myself too. I have, I have some flooding issues as well. And I'm not in a flood zone in Kenilworth, just so you know. But these, the water comes so hard so fast, and it, there's nowhere for it to go, unfortunately. But, um, okay. Anything else for the CFO? I mean the engineer? Sorry, I didn't get to you yet, Jill. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, before I go to CFO, I just wanted to um, welcome Maria Good um, to our borough. She's going to be our new tax collector, and um, I think I can speak on behalf of myself and the governing body um, that we're really happy that she's coming on board. She's uh, got great credentials, and I'm sure she's going to be a great asset to Kenilworth. Okay, um, borough CFO. Um, so on the tax side, the taxes are going to be due May 1st. Um, Ten-day grace period. Uh, we're seeing an uptick in the um, senior freeze program with uh, getting the form certified. Uh, besides the budget that we've been working on, uh, Ken and myself have been working very hard trying to uh, gather all of the uh, capital needs, and I'll be emailing the finance committee uh, to have a meeting ASAP to start looking at some of the capital projects. There's quite a few that uh, the departments have been asking for. A couple of the items uh, have been already uh, approved. So we need to uh, get that uh, onto the agenda because there's a two month process for the capital items to get that approved. So I will email, I'll work with Angela and then we'll send an email out uh, to come up with the finance uh, committee meeting to, to start that process. Great, thank you very much. Thank you for all your hard work. We're gonna miss you. <laughs> but we're happy we were here again. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, Bill Attorney. Good evening, Mayor. Uh, I have no report. Uh, I do uh, suggest that we go into executive session uh, to discuss a couple of issues this evening. Uh, one has to do with uh, a global issue of access rights uh, under certain circumstances uh, to uh, borough property, uh, a possible uh, subdivision that the borough uh, was previously exploring, uh, 109 North 19th Street, and uh, some zoning uh, advice regarding uh, residential districts, all under uh, attorney client communication. Okay, we will do that. I'll do that after the session. You want to save that for the end of the meeting? Yeah, yeah. send it to the. It, we're going to save that for the end of the meeting. So I know there's some people from the public mm -hmm. that want to get up and speak. Okay, uh, borough administ administrator. Uh, 
I do have a couple of quick. The, the first thing I'm going to say, I know everybody said it, but I work a lot with Jill, and I think she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I really like Ken, but I will really miss you, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> I really, it has been. <laughs> Uh, it's been a pleasure and an honor to work with you this past year and a half, and I don't think I would have been nearly as successful without you. I, I, thank you. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Um, uh, just a, I have a couple of quick things. One is I'm just going to give everyone a heads up um, that we purchased a new reverse 911 system. I will say the chief. Uh, really uh, the chief and Lisa in finance both kind of realized we had some issues with the old one. The chief went out and found this new system, showed it to Lisa and, and I. It's fantastic. We were very impressed, loved it. It's very, um, uh, it can do so many things. It's very flexible, very user friendly. So we, um, I don't mean to steal your thunder chief, but I'm just going to Excited to talk about how uh, the, the chief and Lisa and, and I um, and a couple of other, the captain and uh, Lieutenant Bryson, have been going through some training. I just wanted to give everyone a heads up. We are in the middle of training for that. Um, it's, it's so great to use. I've done some tests. It, it's pretty exciting. So just giving people a heads up, we're looking for it to go live in um, the beginning of May. The one thing, we will put out a lot of information so people will know how to sign up. We are going to go forward. I'm just kind of putting the word out. People will have to sign up new. doesn't matter if you were signed up for the old system or not. Um, you will have to register with this new system. So we will have flyers that will be on the website, the media sign, TV channel. We'll be at the street fair with some information. Shirley is going to work with the seniors to get the word out and get them signed up. Um, we even talked about um, with Lorraine at the library that mm -hmm. she may have some uh, volunteers take, mm -hmm. like at the library, she's had um, a lot of people ask about doing community service, so we talked about maybe if they do, they could sit there and people could come and sign, seniors could come and sign up at the library and have some open hours. So we're looking at different things. We will put, get the word out, but I just wanted to give the heads up and so people are aware. Um, and I'm excited for this new system. Um, I have two ordinances I just wanted to give the governing body a heads up on that uh, are kind of coming from me, from my department. Uh, one is limousine licenses. We do license limousines. Um, we don't really have the right ordinance for what we are doing and what we're required to do. So I worked with uh, Mark and um, he did draft uh, a proposed ordinance I'm review I have I have not yet reviewed it which is also why I wanted to just give everyone the heads up I'm gonna go through it um, but then I will share that with all of you it will be coming hopefully on the May 1st and it's really um, just to kind of get in line with what we should be what we're required to do okay, okay. Um, the next one is the personnel policies uh, when we updated the handbook Last year, we knew that one of the reasons where there were a lot of inconsistencies we had in the ordinance. The personnel policies are in the ordinance in the borough code. The handbook was separate. Um, a lot of things got moved to the handbook as a requirement from our GIF, just, and we made a lot of updates. So we need to clean, clean up for um, lack of a better term, uh, the <coughs> ordinance and the personnel policies. So Bob Merriman did draft that. He and I met today to go through some of the things. I just am giving you a heads up. I will share that with you. Um, he's going to make a few changes, and then I will share that with you. And we are looking to put that on the May 1st uh, agenda as well. I'll as part of that, some other pieces um, may get changed in the handbook. They will be, so there will be a few changes and tweaks to the handbook as well with that. Nothing major, just new sections that may be in there. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to give everyone a heads up. When you get it, you have questions or anything like that, of course, uh, ask. 
Um, and then uh, I think that's it. I have okay. a question about yep. the handbook. When you yep. update them, how do you distribute them to uh, all the employees? Like they they get an, um, every time it's updated, they get another copy. Yeah, you know, last time it was such a big change, we gave the full. Bob and I talked about depending on what they are. This time we probably will distribute. You'll see there's. Um, It'll probably warrant a whole other copy. Um, depending in the future, this is the, the beauty of it, is we don't need an ordinance change to make changes right. to these policies. That's one of the main reasons all these are pulled out and only going to be. You'll see the new ordinance is really kind of nothing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if it's a small section, you know, like just one, a new <coughs> policy is created and it's a small paragraph, we could distribute that alone and, and then insane. add it in okay. yes but we do require that especially for this last major everyone was distributed a copy they had to sign and mm -hmm. confirm that they received it and give that back to me right. so uh, anything else that's all okay that's all you have thank you is there a motion to accept and approve borough reports motion second all in favor aye, aye. aye. Um, we have two ordinances for final adoption tonight. Ordinance 2024-05, uh, introduced on March 20th, 2024. An ordinance amending Chapter 15, Departmental Structures, Section 15-2, Police Department Table of Organization of the Borough of Kenilworth Municipal Code. Is there a motion to open the public hearing on Ordinance 2024-05? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Does anyone have anything to say on this ordinance and this ordinance only? Please come forward and state your name and address. Okay. Seeing no one, I'd like to close the floor uh, for the public hearing and adopt Ordinance 2024-05. Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilman Boyle. Yes. Councilman Finistrella. Yes. Councilwoman Giordana Paserno. Yes. Councilman Morrill. Yes. Councilman Scaris. Yes. Councilman Zimmerman. Yes. Ordinance 2024-05 has been adopted. Ordinance 2024-06 introduced on March 20th, 2024. Calendar year 2024 ordinance to establish a cap bank NJSA 40A colon 4-45 colon 14. Is there a motion? Oh, point 14, sorry. Is there a motion to open uh, the public hearing on Ordinance 2024-06? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Does anyone have anything to say on this ordinance and this ordinance only? Please come forward. Okay, seeing no one, is there a motion to close the public hearing and adopt Ordinance 2024-06? Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilman Boyle. Yes. Councilman Finistrella. Yes. Councilwoman Giordana Paserno. Yes. Councilman Morrill. Yes. Councilman Scaris. Yes. Councilman Zimmerman. Yes. Ordinance 2024-06 has been adopted. Okay, we have the adoption of the 2024 municipal budget. Um, our CFO is going to, do you have a statement on the budget? Uh, yeah, do, do you want me to say it or do you want Do you have a statement? Uh, I, could, I could start and then and you can go into more detail. Okay. Um, uh, again, Joe, thanks for your uh, efforts and congratulations on your retirement. You're going to be surely missed, but I know Ken can pick up the slack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, uh, uh, the numbers, they look uh, quite interesting. Uh, the biggest uh, bulk of the budget was the medical insurance for the group insurance and debt service paying down all the, uh, the for the capital costs of maintaining the, the, the town and, 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 and issuing bonds and paying off the, uh, the bonds. <clears throat> um, we did save some money on the GIF, some the insurance that we uh, switched to, and some pension uh, monies that uh, did save us a little bit there in solid waste. <clears throat> so basically, the average house assessed at $184,529 will have an increase of $302.63, unfortunately, um, of which, Part of that $31.37 is the library uh, cost. 
uh, of the $271.26, $106.88 is due to the drop in net valuation. And I guess in layman's term, I guess, I don't know, Joe could probably explain a little more better, but the Merck property, let's say, was 80% of our tax revenue, but well, with the tax abatement, now they're only 60%, or something to that effect, or 65. So who's gonna pick up the slack? Unfortunately, the taxpayer. And if you want to get through more detail, um, that's... Uh, yeah, so what about that slide? I uh, have a little bit of a hard topic to understand, but uh, as the uh, councilman has explained, you know, Merck uh, absorbed quite a bit of the taxes, um, and now that their assessment, uh, you know, is lower than it's been in the past, uh, the, the budget is divided into a, uh, into a small group. So uh, unfortunately, you know, they're, what they're paying less of is being distributed amongst the, uh, uh, amongst the rest. And that's just how the uh, taxation in New Jersey, unfortunately, works. So it's, you know, it's nice to have a big taxpayer, but it's also, uh, you know, in a case like this, it's a, it's a liability that, you know, if something happens where their taxes go down, unfortunately, the rest of just go up. And Excuse me. And um, not to make more salt into the wound, uh, from what I heard, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Ken, that school referendum didn't kick in yet. I think it's supposed to start next year. 2025. So. Yeah. yeah. So everybody that you know, that wanted that, that's gonna. Yeah, the school referendum. I mean, that that had to go out to vote, and the residents voted it through. I'm just curious, uh, the calculations you were using for the tax assessment to go down, we go up. The original publications by the Board of Ed about what the average home may have to pay for the bond referendum, does that get affected by this swing? So with Merck having had been part of that pool, and their assessment going down, does the referendum expectations on the average home, should we expect that to go up? Well, that, that, uh, the change in that value it does affect the rate. It affects the, uh, the county, the board of edge. Um, that, that's the unfortunate, okay. Yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna feel this again at the referendum stage because of this, mm -hmm. the leveling. Right, and the only, the only budget we have not heard on yet is the county budget. Uh, I did email the tax administrator today. Their budget is due to uh, be adopted uh, in the middle, or no, I think it was the uh, beginning of May. And then what they do is then they equalize it amongst all the, all the towns. And they are pretty uh, tight-lipped about, um, you know, how that affects the individual town. So, you know, even if the county budget goes up, that doesn't necessarily mean that your town's uh, budget is going to go up. Some towns will go up, some towns go down, and they, they equalize it across the board. So that is the only component of, that we don't know of yet. Uh, but we'll continue to do the uh, estimated tax bills um, because the uh, state is on a fiscal year and we're on a calendar year. And uh, we don't get a tax rate uh, until sometimes the end of July. And we can't operate and pay this without having tax bills out. So we've been doing this and get bills um, probably the last uh, four or five years, and that will have to continue. We're going to have to that we lost a lot of state aid. We're working on that too. Try to get some money back. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to pull over to the, uh, the board, but I'm not really sure how they're doing with their budget. You know, they have a budget out there yet, they, they have a certain timeline where they have to uh, pass their budget on. They, they had a budget, and then that came, um, that announcement came out. So I know their finance committee had an emergency meeting, um, and they're working to either try and get some of it either reversed or um, 
they're sending in an appeal, and then whatever else. They had a couple of projects they said that they were anticipating doing, aside from the, you know the big work that's happening, and there's been a sharp fall to all of that. So I know they're working on it. Is it uh, rumor has it they were thinking of some layoffs? I didn't hear of layoffs. I heard there were some teachers that were retiring and they were not going to replace them. Eight teachers. And this is what I'm using to try to fight the state to get us some more money. Because we need those teachers. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's somewhat true. So they'll be filled in with part timers and whatnot. Every single uh, budget line, every revenue line, and uh, we're really trying to do uh, what we can. There's a lot of the a lot of the costs are out of the control of the municipality um, that you can't do too much about. And you just have to absorb them. So uh, you know, it's it's not as good as we would have liked, but you know, hopefully uh, next year will be a, a better year. So, okay, thank you, Jill. Is there a motion to open the public hearing on uh, the 2024 municipal budget? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Does anyone have anything to say regarding the 2024 municipal budget? Please come forward and state your name and address. Okay, seeing no one, is there a motion to close the public hearing on 2024 municipal budget? Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilman Boyle? Yes. Councilman Finistrella? Yes. Councilwoman Giordano Paserno? Yes. Councilman Morrow? Yes. Councilman Scurries? Yes. Councilman Zimmerman? Yes. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution number 2024 110 authorizing the 2024 municipal budget to be read by title only? Motion. Second. Roll call? So, uh, Joe. Councilman Boyle? Yes. Councilman Finistrella? Yes. Councilwoman Giordana Paserna? Yes. Councilman Morrow? Yes. Councilman Scurries? Yes. Councilman Zimmerman? Yes. Is there a motion to adopt resolution number 2024 111, resolution adopting the 2024 municipal budget? Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilman Boyle? Yes. Councilman Finistrella? Yes. Councilwoman Giordano Paserno? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Scurries? Yes. Councilman Zimmerman? Yes. Next for council consideration is the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. Second. The consent agenda consists of resolutions 2024-112 through 2024-121. These resolutions will be approved by one motion. All items will be recorded individually in full in the minutes. Councilman Boyle? Yes. Councilman Finistrella? Yes. Councilwoman Giordano Paserno? Yes. Councilman Morrow? Yes. Councilman Scurries? Yes. Councilman Zimmerman? Yes. We have one ordinance 2024-07 uh, for introduction. An ordinance amending ordinance number 2024-02 affecting employees' titles, salary ranges, and personnel policies for borough employees of the borough of Kenilworth. Is there a motion to approve ordinance 2024-07 for introduction? Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilman Boyle? Yes. Councilman Finistrella? Yes. Councilwoman Giordano Paserno? Yes. Councilman Morrow? Yes. Councilman Scurries? Yes. Councilman Zimmerman? Yes. Be it hereby resolved that Ordinance 2024-07 heretofore introduced does now pass on first reading and that said ordinance be further considered for final passage 
at a meeting to be held on May 1st, 2024 at 6 o'clock p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the Borough Council and that at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the Borough Clerk is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to open the floor to the public? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Does anyone have anything to say for the good and well-being of Kenilworth? Please come forward and state your name and address. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul George. I live at 727 Richfield Ave. I'm just trying to figure out what, what's the update on a drainage solution on the street that has no stormwater drainage on it at, at this time. Is there an update on this? Um, There's a little evaluating, you know, uh, alternatives. Uh, How about that uh, ditch? Did the parkway, did we get in a hold of the parkway? Are they going to take care of that, yeah. cleaning that out? Yeah. That portion of the Ridgefield drains into a ditch or section of private property ultimately ends up into the uh, parkway system. Uh, so part of the problem is we just can't go in there because it's private property and, and do what we want to do. Um, again, it's also, like I mentioned before, these, uh, we call them ditches, but they're streams and they're regulated by UP. So we got to, you know, we're looking into what we can do. Um, we also trying to see if we can evaluate any uh, alternatives to talking to this, uh, any existing storm sort. Uh, so we don't really have a, a solution yet. We're going to come back uh, hopefully soon with a, with a recommendation. But, um, you know, we're, we can also, we're also going to put some pressure on the property owner who owns the ditch to do some, uh, any maintenance they can do, again, within the DEP regulations. So um, we still don't have really a, um, we still don't have an answer. I mean, we're looking at all possibilities, but we don't have really have a, a, a final Okay. So the property was out on the second of March, and they cleared out all the debris that was blocking the streams that was just on their property. That's right. And they did say that a lot of the residents who back up against their property were dumping tree parts and piles of leaves on the property. And Parkway informed me that residents dump their debris on Parkway property. They can be cited fines by the state police but they said uh, that's only if it's overly abused that's when they got to right. start doing so i think people don't realize when they're dumping leaves and debris and stuff it does wind up backing up and causing flooding issues um i know people on the north end of town know that very well um you know i, I think it's important that everyone really disposes of their leaves and weeds and things like that properly because it does wind up in the storm drains it does wind up blocking things up and people flood tony or uh, greg do we do we have a contact with the state police or the or with that that entity to maybe sign put some signage up there you know uh, no dumping allowed be subject to prosecution if that's parkway property why don't they sign that, yeah that's what i'm saying like the, i'm right. saying the parkway do we have a do we have a contact for the parkway yeah, to, Greg to does. do that Greg does. contact with the general foreman or no superintendent i could say of the parkway authority that's um what two exits down right going south yeah in clark right um mike staff is his name um if you want me to i'll reach out to him and see if he'll be willing to yeah, they used to have signs right off of um, Market Street there along that, that, that little track by where the train tracks used to cut through. And oh, you know, maybe it'll deter some people from right. dumping there. Hopefully. People, people just assume that it's a, it's a blank piece of property and they can dump stuff there. They don't realize it's state property. You always say state just property. Said it hurts all of us. When right. people state dump, property, really, it no, hurts no, everyone. Legal dumping will be you know, in, enforced by whatever. Mike Staff also wants to be remind residents that any chain link fence that borders Garcia Parkway property belongs to Garcia Parkway. It was okay. there first, and they installed it. It's not a residence. As you said, I don't know which other house it was, but he said one resident was cutting the fence to bring in the grass clippings and dump it in the woods. So 
I don't know if it was in our town or on the other side of the parkway. But Could we put out some kind of reverse 911 so people know that they cannot illegally dump in Kenilworth? Like, yeah, some signage would be, would be a good start yeah, just so people yes, know yes, that, it's, that it's state property and that they'll be subject to, to uh, you know, fines if they do dump there. Right. Hopefully this clean out on the parkway will help you in the meantime. So what I'm understanding is that I have to rely on proper, private property owners for drainage on the borough street. Um, for right now, this is, I'm not sure, you know, we, I didn't build, we didn't build your street and I'm not really sure why this, there weren't storm draw, uh, drains put in the street when it was built, but this is uh, the situation we have now. I don't want to pay my taxes to the private property owners. I pay it to the borough. So every time I have a flood, I have to manually pump the water out of the street that doesn't belong to me myself. But the street is your property, though, correct? The last 20 feet of it, but the rest of it is not my property. So it's flooding before that 20 feet? Sometimes it does. But once it does that, then it backs into my garage, and I have to pump it for everybody on that street, which. I don't believe that's fair. <clears throat> yeah, again, it's, it's, you know, it's not unusual for um, <clears throat> you know, some of these streams and ditches that are in private property. And like I said, it's just, you know, the infrastructure was built, you know, like 80 years ago. Uh, <clears throat> there is no infrastructure on that street. Well, a ditch is, an, is part of the infrastructure. The stream, the ditch, the drainage course. I mean, again, we're looking into solutions, uh, you know, we still have uh, everything. What are the solutions we're looking into? What's that? What are the solutions you're looking into? What are the options? Well, we're looking to see if we can tie into a storm sewer. Um, we're looking to see what we can do with the deep pools to possibly uh, improve the ditch or you know, at least clean it, get it flowing properly. Parkway already did some work already to, to, to you know, unclog their culvert, uh, get rid of some of the debris. Um, so you know, those are the things we're looking at. We just don't have, uh, we just don't have a look into yet. Now, is there an approximate timeline for the residents? Uh, so you know the time we would expect? Yeah, it'll be the next, maybe the next couple of weeks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else from the public? I Okay, we can come up again if you'd like. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Again, I live on Wilshire Drive, and um, I've been dealing with the flood situation for about 18 years. Can you just state your name again? Oh, my name is Louisa Latour. And you're, you're a, what is your house number? Uh, it's on Wilshire Drive. Right, the house number. 24. For record, 24. Okay, thank um, you. But I've been dealing with that flooding situation for about 18 years. I bought the house in 2002. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like in about 2005, 2006, they put in all new pipes down in, in the ground. They did some work, but it looks like ever since they did that work, the flooding problem has increased. Who's they? I don't, well, the oh, town. Oh, you don't know. The town. Was did. it the town? They paved brasser, and at the same time, they put in all uh, new pipes, new uh, underground. Okay, so, but ever since that situation that they did that work, the problem has, I was told by the previous engineer um, that there were 12 inch pipes and they put 24 inch pipes. But the problem has gotten worse. That's when I, we, we have flooding, just a 10 minute downpour, 10, 15 minutes, it's all it takes, a heavy rain and the water starts bubbling out of four storm drains that are in front of the house. There's two in front of mine and then two on the other side. And the water just starts bubbling up and it floods the whole street. I get two feet of water in my driveway. And it's becoming so, I get anxiety attacks every time it rains. And people have noticed that I just get real tense because I know what I'm gonna face. You know, I've gotten up at 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, moved three cars out of that driveway because there's two feet of water in the driveway. He gets up to put, my husband gets up to put up the barriers, and then I get to move the cars. 
it's just becoming a struggle. I can't, I can't deal with it anymore. That's why I'm, I've come here a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've gotten emails here. from you. Um, I've, I've come here even in 2007, 2008, and I was told that nothing could be done. You know, that it's my house and to deal with it. So I was like, really? It's the street, it's not my house that's got the issue. So well, I think that whole, it is a flood zone, and that is a big well, part I, of the I, problem. I understand that. Well, that is the, the problem, zone. really. I understand that I bought a house in a flood zone, but I don't understand that after just 10 minutes that I've got, you know, a river yeah. in my driveway. Yeah. And I, like I said, I have a picture. Yeah, no, I believe you. What it looks you. like. It, it looks like a river. And, and it's it's just becoming really frustrating. Sure, I totally me. understand that, 100%. And I, I, I don't want the city to spend millions of dollars that don't exist. It's it's just I want some solution. I want to know why this happens. Why does this water back up in front of my driveway? I mean, even my neighbors. Um, Have we looked at this pipe, Tony, I guess at any point to make sure that there's no break in it or obstruction? I mean, we took a look at it, we did the walkthrough, we didn't really see anything that was that serious that would cause any damage to the backup. I mean, she's saying after 10 minutes, it's backing up. Yeah, it's 10 minutes, it's, it's heavy, heavy rain. And I mean, it's, it's just a characteristic of the watershed, you know, um, it just has a very fast peak time, uh, goes up and then goes down. Um, I do agree, I think when that work was done back in 2005, they changed some of the grades in that intersection. And a lot of our orders have certain surcharging to the storm sewer. Um, so again, we're going to be, you know, doing some work there. If, you know, the council authorized and the contract was awarded. Uh, like I mentioned before, we're going to start with printing material and tomorrow to get that started. And that's going to uh, improve that situation. Hopefully, that'll help you. Well, I was told by a neighbor that was on Brasser because the creek was behind her house. Well, she moved out ever since, but she told me that 10 years prior that she moved, the creek was cleaned out, it was dredged, it was, and the problem, you know, didn't exist for quite yeah, a while. We're not allowed to dredge the creek anymore. The DEP will not allow that. It's a big problem. It is a big problem. I, like Believe I said, me, I there's been, you know, with, uh, many, many conversation. If we could go in and dredge and clean it out all the way down the river. Yeah, she told we me could, that that really resolved the problem right, for a while. But they were not allowed. But then I also had the issue with a landscaper thinking the creek was his personal dump. I know. Now Again, another problem with residents illegally dumping grass and debris and leaves. It hurts everybody. People really have to know that it winds up in the storm sewers and people are flooding and it's causing it, it was a, I, we got into arguments with this person and i know exactly um, who it is and so do a lot of other people here and um it has been resolved thank yes you, yes because he's not doing it anymore right but every time we had that flooding you could see all the grass coming up in right the water. Mm -hmm. and i'm going you know put two and two together you're right. causing it has alleviated a little bit. Not just in Kenilworth, but downstream. He's causing problems in other Absolutely. towns, too. I can say it's alleviated because the water doesn't come up as quickly as it used to. But it's still there. It's still flooding when, you know, the last couple of storms. Well, let's hope that the work that's about to happen in the yes. next couple of weeks gives you some relief. Absolutely. And I'm going to pray I'm, for that. I'm just, you know, yeah. I, I love my house. Of course. And, uh, uh, and I, you know, did a lot of work to it too. And, and I hate to, you know, someday if I want to sell it, it's, I can't do it because who am I going to give it to with that issue? Right. Who's going to buy it? You know, it's a nice house, but who am I going to sell it to with? Right. I well, have to disclose that. Like I say, hopefully this work that's going to be done in the next couple of weeks will, will help you or at least alleviate some of this problem. I guess we'll, we'll have to see. But I'm going to pray that it does. Yes, so do I. <laughs> that's all I think that's about when you have the DP and let them know how their idiot policies are causing harm to people. I mean, they can go over 
Well, when we dredge, we cause a problem for someone else. That's the problem. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. Dredge, they just don't want you to touch it. They want it to be natural. Yeah, there's, there's like fish and stuff in there and, and all that yeah. too. And, and so that's why it's they don't so want you to touch it. That creek is so overgrown that it's, right. you know, even the backyard. It's considered wetlands. Like, so. Right. But we don't worry about the backyard because... But it's the front of the house that's the problem. Right. The water starts flowing into from the, the house. From the sewer. We've got plenty of room to catch the fish from on the other side of the dike. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to cost people how much money? Do you care about the fish? Or <laughs> well, I think it's They're more than yeah. just yeah. it's more than just fish. But yeah, no, they dressed yeah. it before. They can do it again. And there well, are still turns. So I, I would side with her. The residents come first. I agree. But I agree too. Where we still can't dredge them. Yeah. Yeah. Just dredge I don't know. They're just an idiot. I have pictures galore in here. Yeah, they should They should know. They just didn't think, oh, we did good. They didn't. They want to remember them. They're, they're, it's they're, not just, the whole they, street gets filled. Yeah, well, it's not just your spot on All right, let's, um, we're getting off topic here. You can trace it back. <laughs> let's open up a Pandora's box here. Okay, um, thank you. Well, I'm, thank I'm, you very much. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Hi, Shirley. Yeah. I'm Shirley Maxwell, 38 South 24th Street in Kenilworth. I would just like to thank all of you and the DPW and Finance Department and others who have been so supportive of the Senior Center and to me in my new role there. Um, as Councilwoman uh, Giordano Persono had mentioned, we have uh, many programs at the Senior Center, and they are listed on the borough website under the uh, department section, social, well, no, social, senior sexual services. senior services. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Angela, for all your help with that, too. Um, there are just a few new programs I'd like to highlight. Uh, we have a program called the Wellness Initiative for Senior Education, um, otherwise known as the WISE program. And this is um, a, an acclaimed program um, that's coming to the Senior Center starting this Tuesday, April 23rd. And it will be continuing for five additional consecutive Tuesdays. It's an interactive program, and it helps participants understand the aging process, make healthy lifestyle choices, manage stress and depression, um, and avoid medication and substance misuse, and also feel confident and empowered. This is a program that's being presented by Prevention Links. Uh, we're very fortunate to have it. Uh, come to the Senior Center. We have 25 seniors registered for it. And we still have a few openings if anyone else is interested. Um, we also are having a pilot program start in June uh, for three sessions, June 13th, 20th, and 27th in strength, balance, and function. This uh, course is being taught by our yoga instructor. Um, again, we have 25 seniors signed up for it so far. And if this is well received and beneficial, we'll look at incorporating it into our regular class schedule in the fall. Budget permitting, of course. Um, we also have some uh, craft classes that start this Friday, um, thanks uh, to the Union uh, Township Health Services Department. And I wanted to mention um, during, the, during the street fair on May 19th, and the grand reopening of the Senior Center from 10 to 4, we're going to have a senior arts, crafts, and photography show. And during that show, uh, seniors will have an opportunity to show their work and to sell it if they wish. Nice. Um, we hope to have good participation in that. And if anyone is interested, uh, please contact me at the Senior Center. 
Um, we're really looking forward to that. We have so many talented seniors, and there is no cost to participate for anyone 60 years of age or older. Our senior picnic is scheduled for Thursday, May 30th from 10.30 to 2. Um, all of you are invited. We hope you'll join us. And um, any seniors in Kenilworth, age 60 and older, are invited to attend. And um, please, please RSVP, um, if possible, by April 29th. Okay. Um, then one more program. Um, we have on June 20th, and this was just scheduled at 6.30 p.m., uh, Walter Bowright, who many of you know, our historian and uh, an acclaimed author of many Kenilworth books, uh, will be coming to the Senior Center to do a program on the history of Kenilworth through postcards. And so that'll be at 6.30 p.m., again, on Thursday, June 20th. Thank you so much. Just real quick, Thank Shirley. You, I know Shirley. I was with you last night for that alliance training. Go, circling back to the first one, the age group was like 55 and up for that one, correct? For the WISE program? The WISE program uh, for any seniors age 60 and over. That's 60 and older. But they also get food every night, right? They're going to dinner yes, or lunch. Yes, um, it's a six-part program. Um, April 23rd, April 30th, May 7th, May 14th, May 21st, and May 28th from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at the Senior Center. It includes lunch. And they, if they attend X amount, they if, get? If they attend four of the six sessions, they get a gift card. Correct. So there's incentive to, to stick there it out and, and go to the program. Yes, there it's is. It's a shop rate gift card, correct? Um, it wasn't disclosed exactly. Yeah, I think she said it's it was probably a, a grocery yeah. grocery gift card. And also it's not necessary to attend all six sessions, although it is recommended to get the full benefit of the program, but they're independent sessions. So if you miss one it, it doesn't matter, you know, other than the material you miss. It's not a continuous program. They're independent of one another, the sessions. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very you much, Shirley. Thank you. Hmm. Anyone else? I don't think they have one for 55, too. I, don't think I just want to, uh, Ken Blum, finance department. <laughs> I, just have a more. Uh, I just want to echo what everybody has said about Jill. It's been a pleasure working with you, Jill. Uh, it's been, what, three and a half years, almost four years now. And uh, just her dedication to Kenilworth has been uh, amazing as tax collector this year, as chief financial officer, and last year. Um, but it's been a pleasure working with you, and I wish you all the best in retirement, and you will be deeply missed. Absolutely. Carolyn Pappas. Hi, Carol. Um, 31 North 21st Street. I just wanted to, uh, I celebrated my 80th birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. In February. Oh. Um, <clears throat> I go to. Why didn't you tell Alaska us before? At the seniors, it, uh, <laughs> the lunches are very good. It's a very nice uh, benefit for financial reasons, but also because I live alone. Well, I have two cats, so I get to eat lunch, but I didn't have to cook. I don't have to wash the dishes. That's great. That. Anyway, it, it, the senior center, and especially with, since Shirley's been there, total blessing. That's wonderful. So I'm happy to hear that. Great, thank you. Okay, anyone else? All right, seeing no one, I'd like a motion to close the floor for public discussion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, at this time the borough has need to go into executive session. Can I have a motion to go into executive session? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 